Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we'll make a custom MDF mold. For this specific job here, the customer is actually doing thermal forming with it and they needed a mold made. This is a prototype just to make sure that everything sort of works out from us to them on their machine. And what it is is basically a baffle, as you can see. And there's a few different ways of doing uh, thermal forming. And for this specific project here, our job was to grab their file, make sure it imported correctly and at the proper resolution. Now the toughest part about making these kind of molds is actually figuring out the right resolution. I'll give you an idea here. So the first process of making the mold is after all the glue uh, or the MDF is glued, you have to carve it out. Now here's what the carving looks like with the roughing bit. Then from there, you can see the triangles or the pyramids. From there, they go to something like this here. So generally we use two bits to do this, although we can use multiple bits. And the reason why you use multiple bits is because you want to get a higher resolution in certain areas or more finer details. But you have to keep in mind the finer the bit you use, the longer the production time. So for instance, this here is the result that you get a good angle. So this is with a 50% step over. Now it's a little bit rough when you run your finger over it, but this is a lot faster than a 20% step over, which is dramatically smoother. Let me show you here. It depends on the light, if you get the light properly. There we go. So you can see, you can see the difference between a 50 and a 20%. Now production time, that's almost, uh, what, almost double the production time. Now is that worth it? We can get away with a 50% step over and then just sand it, because it is MDF, and you have a really nice surface finish. Now again, this relies on you know, the human being sanding it, in this case here, so you just gotta be very careful with it, very methodical. But when it comes to making custom molds, it, that's the biggest sort of issue you have to sort out. If you go to higher resolution, the cost of the mold costs a lot more, and the machine might not even show that, for instance. That's the, that's the case here. So if we go to step over, or 50%, the machine maybe uh, the way it works in the mold, mold making process might not even show it. So what's the point of going to 50% to 20% step over uh, to produce the uh, same result in the final mold? So because this project involved making a three inch thick MDF piece, you can't buy a three inch thick MDF. You probably wouldn't want to because it would have some stability issues. So the only way to accomplish that is actually to make it myself. Now the challenge with this here is how much glue do you put? I prefer to use way too much glue than not enough, because if I use too much glue, it just seeps along the edges and you know, it just wastes this sort of glue. But if I don't use enough, I have a very bad problem because when the CNC is cutting and plowing through this finished model, the result will be horrible because little pieces will come flying off. So it looks a little bit like at the end, you see the strata of the different layers of MDF. And that's what you see on the finished model. But that's why uh, they're there is because they're a layer of, of glue. Now the machine I have behind me here is perfect for making custom molds, either thermal forming or whatever other molding process you need. And the reason for that is because if you notice here, there's a huge gantry. It's extremely heavy. And you'll also notice that it does not move. There's no little engines on the sides of it to move it back and forth. What's happening is the table itself is moving back and forth. And then the gantry here is going this way, back and forth. And of course, up and down. So because of this, you can have a very, very rigid machine. And that's very important because something that's really tough about molds, um, if you have a, not a really good rigid machine, which I used to have, is that the vibrations of the process itself will start to cause problems with the bit and therefore on the finished process. Now here's an example of what we can do. This was actually done with my ShopBot desktop, which is a wonderful machine and very high resolution. This took almost forever to do, but it gives you an idea of the resolution that we can achieve. Now for this specific mold, it's about two and a half inches tall. So this is beyond the scope of what my ShopBot desktop could do. And it's perfect for this machine here uh, for various reasons. Now, of course, we're doing prototyping, so what that means is 
I want to use the same machine and the same process that I'd use for the far larger project using the little project. So then I have consistency across the board. So basically the same settings I use for this can be used for the same settings for the future projects. Now the whole process of making the mold is a very uh, time intensive project and there's a lot of things that can go wrong with it. So that's why when before I made this project here, I did a test on a smaller piece uh, just to make sure that all my settings and everything worked out. And it also allowed me to establish the, the settings I needed uh, for the resolution. Because if you have a too high resolution, you end up with jagged edges. And maybe that's good, maybe that's bad for the finished product. But you want to get a nice sort of consistent look without using a crazy amount of machine time. Now what I'm doing here, the initial one, was using a larger bit, diameter bit, and that clears out most of the material. And that's relatively fast. I also cleared out around the mold because I was a little bit concerned about um, some clearance issues around where I was chart, where I was, you know, cutting out material. And after that is done, then the very slow process of actually using a very fine bit and going over everything uh, to produce the finished result. Now this is by far the slowest process uh, of the whole mold making process, uh, but that's when you actually see the finished product. Now the resolution I use for this can be modified however I want based on steps. So if I set it up as let's say 20% steps, I'm going over the same area, I'm just moving by about 20%, or 100% I'm going to a new area every time. When it comes to making custom molds, uh, there's no real limitation. Uh, we go to a finer, finer resolution to the point where it looks totally sanded and you don't even see the machining marks. It'll take absolutely forever, but we can do that. But the only real limitation that we have is that you'll notice that we have a bit and it's on top, and it's going downwards. Therefore, any sort of inside parts, let's say we wanted to make the mold this way, we couldn't because the bit is on the top. Now, that's something to keep in mind with some of these molds is that we have to make them in multiple parts. What I mean by that is, you know, maybe the top looks like this here, for instance, and then there's some inside cavities that we need to draw out. Now, there's a few ways to do that, but the easiest way to do that is actually to sort of cut the model out like this here and actually machine that and then glue it back onto the model. So you might end up with like a hodgepodge of different sort of uh, resolutions and different sort of results that you need to produce for the customer, then stick it all together and then you have a finished mold that the customer can use at their end. Now, as you can see, there's the sacrificial part of the MDF, I don't need it. The reason why it's there is because I needed to screw this down into the table. I have a powerful vacuum system, but I prefer to have, you know, backups in case something fails. I still have the screws, something else fails. I still have other sort of methods to hold it there because the process of cutting this out is a very long process. And the last thing you want to do is start the process here about 10 minutes before it's finished and then something happens and you got to redo the whole job. And I've had that happen before. So that's why I'm very cautious about it. It's a very fine line when it comes to going fast. Uh, you might think, well, you know, this machine here can go, I think 1600 inches a minute. And that's, that's like crazy speed. And I could totally do that. I can make this mold at that speed. The problem is this happens. So here's one of the bits we used and you notice that it's sheared right off. So the machine can, you know, nothing will stop this machine from moving. It's incredibly powerful. If I had a car over here, it would actually push the car or push the whole table out of the way. It, it just does not stop and it's really overpowered, which is wonderful for these kind of projects. But it also means that, you know, I could easily shear off bits, with, which I've done a ton of times with this because the machine will keep moving. It, it's, it's sort of dumb. It doesn't know really what it's doing. It's like a laser. A laser just sort of cuts where you say, and it doesn't know if it's going through the material or not. This one here, um, it, you know, it just does exactly what you tell it. So if you say, well, I want to carve all of this out in one shot in about one second, it will try to do it. And the result will be broken bits and broken machinery and everything else. So tear yourself apart doing the job if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So how do you about, go about getting uh, molds made by us? Uh, the simplest way is to send us the STL files. Uh, molds are generally 3D, um, like this here. Give you an idea. So there's X, so we have X, Y, and we also have the depth. And it's the combination of all of those that make the finished product. So that's why generally the file format we use is an STL format, which is the same format you actually use for 3D printers. And based on that, we can do the programming and you know, figure out the feeds and speeds, 
figure out which uh, bits to use, the best bits to use, and then from there, make the mold and ship it right to your door.